For the Seattle Seahawks, 1981 was a tale of two seasons. The Seahawks struggled through the first part of their schedule, but finished with a flourish, giving their followers hope for the future and a season's worth of memorable moments. The slow start might have been the perfect excuse for the Seahawks to close up shop and call in the dogs. But the players never quit on the fans or themselves. They got up off the floor and fought back. And in so doing, they defeated some of the strongest teams in football. Seattle's efforts transformed a potentially damaging season into a season of progress, a season of renewed dedication a season of tenacity and turnaround. Sunday, September 13th, the home opener for the 1981 season. Another sellout crowd made its way toward the King Dome, confident that this would be the day, the day the King Dome jinx would end. The Seahawks had not won at home in eight previous tries, but today, head coach Jack Patera had a few surprises in store. The Seahawks' heads were full of mischief, as they awaited their battle with AFC West rival Denver. Seattle was poised to empty its bag of tricks on the unsuspecting Broncos, tricks that would bring the King Dome losing streak to an end. 51-yarder from the Denver 41, they fake it. Zorn back to pass, looks to Herrera instead, throws to Fuse, he's open at the 25, 20, 15, he's brought down at the 12-yard line. First and 10 Seahawks. Warren looking over that Denver defense. Off a of play fake, back to pass. Looks, lobs one in the end zone. It's caught, touchdown. Warren that time through to the tight end. Dennis Boyd, who lined up as the tight end that time. And the Seahawks have won it, snapping an eight-game losing streak here at the Kingdom. Final score this afternoon, the Seattle Seahawks 13, Denver Broncos 10. The Kingdom streak was over. But sadly, a new streak was about to begin. For the next five weeks, victory eluded the Seattle Seahawks. As the team approached midseason, their record stood at one and six. The players were concerned, but quitting was the furthest thing from their mind. You know, my, my primary goal was this year was to uh, see the Seahawks try to come out a winner. And uh, so far this year, we, we hadn't done a very good job in coming out a winner, but, you know, nobody has given up. We've lost a few games. It's just going to take that much more strength. And now we've had meetings. We're going to pull together and turn this thing around. Dave Brown's attitude was shared by the members of the Seattle defense a unit determined to end the Seahawks' streak. The group included men like Manu Tui Asosopo, who moved from tackle to defensive end, a change that seemed much to his liking. Others contributing up front included Robert Hardy, Jacob Green, Mike White, Fred Anderson, and experienced veteran Doug Sutherland. Together, they logged the second highest sack total in team history.
While the front four brought down quarterbacks and opposing ball carriers, they found solid support behind them from Seattle's linebackers, who managed to keep right in step. Joe Norman and Terry Beeson held the middle. Keith Butler patrolled the flanks. And defensive ace Michael Jackson, number 55, took care of everything else. Rookies Rodell Thomas, Brian Flonis, Greg Gaines, and Kevin Turner added additional punch to the line back, blending effectively with a defensive philosophy that gave the players freedom to follow their instincts. I think our defense right now is set up to make everybody look good. It, it just allows us to roam the field. It allows our linemen to take off and make things happen. The linebackers can sit back and make the tackles. Our DBs are back and they're playing the ball. And if the linebackers miss a tackle, they come up and put a big hit on the guy. And the thing that I like about our defense right now is everybody's getting to the ball. They force things to happen. They don't sit back and wait anymore. The hard hitting of Dave Brown, Keith Simpson, Gregory Johnson, Curry Justin, and Kenny Easley caused more than a few bruises and fumbles, making the Seattle deep zone a most unpleasant place to be. Opposing receivers knew that the man to watch out for was safety John Harris. The four-year veteran may not have been a household name at the beginning of the season, but by year's end, his 10 interceptions made him the most prolific pass thief in the AFC. While John Harris was running interceptions in for touchdowns, another fellow was carrying the ball a bit himself a few thousand miles east of Seattle. Number 33, Theotis Brown was a tailback playing as a fullback for the St. Louis Cardinals. Brown blocked for backfield mate Otis Anderson and ran as hard as he could. But despite all this, he found himself forced to take a seat on the sidelines. Unwanted in St. Louis, Brown came to Seattle, changed uniforms, jersey numbers, and the Seattle running game. It wasn't easy for me at first, you know, being in St. Louis and playing behind an all-pro. And uh, now it's a situation that I, I enjoy. The, the main thing is that if Theodos Brown does well, uh, I think the Seattle offense will do well. And I just hope that the Seattle Seahawks organization and the Seattle Seahawks fans enjoy what I'm doing out there. Enjoy it, they did. It was no accident that Brown's arrival coincided with the Seahawks' mid-season turnaround. Brown's running and infectious enthusiasm played a major part in a Week 8 victory over the Jets, a victory that finally got the Seahawks out of the hole. Then a most unlikely running star took over, wide receiver Steve Largent. They got to be pumped up now. Here's Sherman, uh, rather, pitch to Largent around the right side. Dornick to block for him at the five. Largent breaks in. Touchdown, Seahawks, and a run by Largent. Third down and six. As Zorn drops back to pass from the Jet 26 yard line, he's going for six in the end zone to Largent. Touchdown, Seahawks! The 19-3 triumph signaled the end of Seattle's first season of frustration. Now would come the second season, 
and the Seahawk turnaround. In the Seattle King Dome, it wasn't such a bad idea to don a protective dome of your own when the Seahawks special teams showed up. The best kick coverage in the league was provided by Steve Rabel, Horace Ivory, Eric Lane, Jim Jodak, Rodell Thomas, number 59, and special teams captain Don Dufat. And when it came to Seattle's own kicking game, punter Jeff West and kicker Efren Herrera were reliable and consistent. Rookie free agent Paul Johns, number 85, made his mark finishing second in the conference in punt returns. But what made the Seahawks the best special teams in football was its flair for the unexpected, with trick plays that could instantly turn the tide of a game. It's really fun because it's uh, it surprises in teams. The funny thing about it is teams know that we do this. They see it on film and they still can't stop us. In Seattle, the special teams were special and fun to play on. Jack Patera knew that exciting trick plays were an element of success, but so too was the dependable work of the offensive line. At center were solid veterans John Yarno and longtime Seahawk Art Q. The right side was manned by tackle Steve August and line leader guard Bob Newton. On the left were young, talented blockers like second year tackle Ron Essek and rookie guard Edwin Bailey. Both youngsters excelled in downfield blocking. Here, Bailey number 65 clears the initial path. Then Essing, number 64, crosses the field to cut down the cornerback, giving ball carrier Theotis Brown the necessary room to break the opponent's contain. A Seattle running back must also be a dependable receiver, and such a requirement made second round pick David Hughes a valuable asset. A hard blocker with soft hands, Hughes caught 12 passes in a single game, a Seahawk record. As usual, there was reliable veteran halfback Sherman Smith, who made 44 receptions, while from the fullback spot, there was a willing target in Dan Dornick. Over the last half of the season, Dornick was a key ingredient to team success. In a week 10 game with Pittsburgh, he turned a 21-3 deficit into a 24-21 Seahawk victory. Seattle at the Steeler 44, back to pass Zorn, quick pass out in the flat, caught at the 42-yard line, down to the 40, 35, on his way, Dornick to the 25-20, hits for the right sideline at the 10 to 5, he's all the way, touchdown Seahawks! Oh, Seahawk fans delighted in the comeback, but even greater things were in store just one week later. Monday night football at the Kingdom, and the Seahawks were eager to show a nationwide television audience that their second half surge was no fluke. But to do so, they would have to conquer a team they had never beaten, the powerful San Diego Chargers. Seahawk defense held the potent Charger offense in check, then stepped aside for some special team sleight of hand. 36-yard field goal try by Herrera, waiting for the snap from center. That's a good one. They run a fake. They get inside to Sherman Smith, who takes off to the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle! And then Dan Dornink made the play that broke the Chargers back. Here's a quick pass, Zorn out in the flat, cut by Dornick out to the 20-yard line, 25 30s. He's got some room to run. He's all the way to midfield, looking for a block, breaks it back to the middle. He's at the 30-yard line, heading for the far side at the 15 to 10, the 5, the touchdown, Seahawks! Seahawks. 
Seattle's stunning victory over the Chargers erased all doubt. The Seahawks had reversed course and were now a formidable foe for anyone. In 1981, Seattle quarterbacks Zorn, Craig, and Adkins threw and completed the most passes in team history. The targets included tight ends Mike Tice and John Sawyer, number 81, who caught everything he could reach. Veteran Sam McCollum, number 84, came up with another solid season on the outside, finishing second on the club in receptions. But once again, the shining star was a fellow named Largent. In 1981, Steve Largent set a team record with 75 receptions. He gained over 1,000 yards for the fourth consecutive season. He led the team in scoring. He made the Pro Bowl for the third time in four years. To no one's surprise, Steve Largent was Seattle's MVP for 1981. While Largent enjoyed his finest season, so too did quarterback Jim Zorn. Zorn's completion percentage was a career high, and he threw the fewest interceptions of any ranking passer in the league. As the season progressed, Zorn was playing the most consistent ball of his career. But in week 13, Zorn suffered a broken ankle, which sidelined him for the year. Zorn could only watch as the quarterbacking duties were passed to young Dave Craig. Ahead lay the Jets, the hottest team in football, and Craig was aware of their league-leading pass rush, the New York Sack Exchange. It was the ultimate challenge for the second-year quarterback from tiny Milton College. But Craig, loose and relaxed, was ready. Ready to lead the Seahawks to pro football's upset of the year. Craig bootlegging around the left side. He's got some room up to the 20, 25. Cuts up field to the 30. Keeps going to the 40-yard line. Finally smashed out of bounds. David Craig. Craig, quarterback, keeper, dives in. Touchdown, Seahawks, over the right side. On this day, the New York Sack Exchange was closed. The Seahawks offensive line shut down the jet pass rush, giving Craig ample time to pick the defense apart. Late in the game, the Jets had the lead, but then Craig delivered the knockout punch. The Seahawks down 23-20. Craig back to pass. Looks right. He's going to throw a deep bomb for Larson up the right side. He's in front. He's got it. The 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Seahawks! Just like the game's back at Milton. The Seahawks won 27-23, making them the only team to beat the Jets in the last 13 weeks of the year. And they did it twice, thanks this time to the heroics of young Dave Craig. But young players contributed on defense as well, including first-round draft choice Kenny Easley and second-year defensive end Jacob Green. Green, number 79, became one of the league's premier pass rushers while also improving his play against the run. I think I played pretty good as a rookie, but this year I think I have shown some improvements in uh, certain situations. Uh, 
I think that uh, my pass rush has become better. Uh, I think that I'm playing the run stronger, too. Green's quickness helped him chase down runners and total a dozen quarterback sacks, a new team record. I now know what I have to do. My job is to get to the quarterback. I think it's just like a, you know, a wide receiver catching a touchdown. I think uh, once you get back to the quarterback, you know you did your job then. Uh, you can feel chills come through your body. Green brought chills to the opposition as well, as did the hard-hitting Easley. Easley started at left safety from day one and then only got better. I study my opponents, I study film, and when the game time comes, it just flows. I don't have to uh, think of what I have to do. It just becomes real instinctive, and I go out and do it. Kenny did it to the Cleveland Browns in the final game of the year, turning in a season's worth of plays in just one afternoon. Sipe is back to pass. Fires one that's going to be picked off by 